and welcome to Jack and the Wizard. I'm James Goss and I will be reading from Doctor Who and the Pirate Planet, which is actually written by Douglas Adams. So, the Doctor was hiding in a cupboard. As he was an ancient Lord of Gallifrey and the owner of an infinitely huge time machine, it was a very large cupboard. The Doctor was on a quest, and those always made him salty. The Doctor had been assigned the task of collecting the key to time. So far, the Doctor had collected one piece out of the six, and was thoroughly over it. It was like having to do a really important jigsaw with the danger that, at any moment, you'd find the missing bit of sky was in the hands of the Black Guardian. The Black Guardian, by the way, was a rather ominous figure who was dedicated to all things evil. As he co-owned the key on a timeshare basis with the White Guardian, the Black Guardian was bound to hamper the Doctor with all the obfuscating zeal of a middle manager at the British Broadcasting Corporation. A further problem with the key to time was that the individual segments could disguise themselves as anything. But the Doctor had the sinking feeling that the segments would be as lacking in imagination as six-year-olds going to a fancy dress party. In its natural state, a segment of the key to time looked like a precious jewel. The first segment had been found in a display case, cunningly disguised as a precious jewel. The Doctor dreaded slinking around the universe, gradually turning his time machine into a trinket shop stuffed full of crystals, pendants and knickknacks. It would be terribly embarrassing if he invited people round, which was unlikely because of the final very annoying thing about the key to time. The Guardian had given the Doctor a new companion. Had the Doctor been consulted, it had produced a list of desirable attributes in companions. Human, ish, stupid and heroic, if male, wide-eyed and amazing, if female, good sense of humour, likes long country walks around quarries, knows one end of the kettle from another, plucky, no idea what plucky means, but we'll know it when I see it, pathologically unable to ask questions, and finally, sturdy ankles. But no, the Guardian hadn't taken the Doctor's wishes into consideration. He had instead provided him with the Time Lady Romana Dratralunda, who was as much fun as a well-dressed telephone directory. The Time Lady Romana Dratralunda was fresh out of Gallifrey's Time Academy, and therefore life with her was one giddy whirl of chit-chat about her A-levels, or whatever they were calling them this week. The Time Lady regarded the Doctor with barely polite amusement. Sometimes she did this little grimacing thing with her lips, which implied that it had fallen out of a Christmas cracker. The Doctor had travelled with giddy a lizard. Since Roman Adveratarunda had arrived, the Doctor had noticed how dusty bits of the TARDIS were. It wasn't that he was untidy, just that there were more important things to do. He had once hired a cleaning lady, who'd vanished inside the TARDIS with a dust from a bucket and never been seen again. He occasionally worried about that. Also, the time Lady Roman Adveratarunda had been at the thermostat. The TARDIS was now distinctly chilly. What had been his home for a considerable number of years was now altogether less cosy. Even the TARDIS's once reassuring hum had changed to a less settled hmm. The Doctor was not a man for plans, schemes or quests. Every morning he advanced on the wardrobe as though he was seeking revenge. This was a man who woke up, grabbed a scarf and went to laugh hard at the universe. And right now, the Doctor was hiding out in his den with his robot dog and worrying very much about the key to time. And I'm done! Hooray!